The purpose of this video is to provide instructions for entering involuntary service event data into MOTS. These are considered one-time events. This information should only be entered by agencies that have been approved to provide involuntary services. Entering client profile data is required before MOTS will accept involuntary services. Instructions for entering data in the client profile section are in another video, which should be viewed before this one. Please review the MOTS reference manual for information on specific fields in the Involuntary Services section. This manual and other helpful tools can be found on the MOTS public website. For reference, here is the URL for the MOTS training environment and the email address for MOTS support. Remember, when using MOTS training, enter only false test data. Real clients should only be entered in the live production environment. After logging in, the MOTS homepage will display. From here, this demonstration will illustrate entering an involuntary service event for an existing, randomly generated client. Click the Client Entry tab at the top of the screen. First, find the client. This is the client lookup screen. Always search for a client before entering a new record for him or her. This will help prevent the accidental creation of duplicate records for the same client. Confirm that the Agency and Facility fields contain the correct selections. Enter all or part of the client's last name, or enter all or part of the client's first name, or client ID, or Medicaid ID. In searching for a client, the less information entered, or the broader the search criteria, the better. Simple differences in the spelling of a name may make existing clients difficult to find. Click the search button. The search results are displayed. When the correct client has been located, click any part of the line containing his or her name and other information. This client has the necessary records for MOTS to allow the entry of involuntary services. It may be useful to take some time to update any information on the existing client profile, behavioral health, or addiction detail screens, if any, that may have changed since data was last submitted for this client. When any applicable updates have been submitted, click the Add Involuntary Services Event button. A client profile matching that in the Behavioral Health record will display. The fields on this tab must be completed for all clients. Most of these fields are required, but some may be optional, conditionally required, or locked due to not applying to the involuntary service data requirements. One other tab appears at the top of the form labeled Involuntary Service. The Client Treatment Status field will auto-populate with Active if the client is currently in treatment at the context facility, or with Involuntary Services if the client is not currently in treatment. Involuntary Services appears here because this client is not in treatment. Complete or update the fields on this screen as needed, then click the Involuntary Service tab at the top of the screen. Each field on this screen will be described in detail as example data is entered. For this demonstration, due to variations in data requirements, data will be entered following three scenarios. Scenario A, no hearing is recommended. Scenario B, a hearing is recommended, no commitment is necessary. Scenario C, a hearing is recommended, a hearing is held, and a commitment is required. Scenario A, no hearing recommended. Fill in the fields as appropriate. Select the date the petition was completed and signed using the calendar icon or by typing the date. The date must appear in an 8-digit format. All other fields may appear completely empty until a date is selected. Select a service status. Select the type of petition that led to this investigation. Select the option that best describes whether a hearing was recommended and why. For situations that fit Scenario A, use any of the No options other than No but Judge Orders Hearing. If No 14-day diversion was selected above, select the option or options that best describe the reasons for the recommendations of a hearing or diversion. Other situations that fit Scenario A have no hearing or diversion recommendation. For those, select N.A. Since no hearing was recommended or held, no additional data is required, and the form is considered complete. Click the Submit button to return to the Client Summary screen.
a new involuntary service event will be added to illustrate the next scenario. Scenario B. A hearing is recommended, no commitment is necessary. Fill in the fields as appropriate. Select the date the petition was completed and signed using the calendar icon or type the date. The date must appear in an 8-digit format. All other fields may appear completely empty until a date is selected. The date must also be different from any other involuntary service records previously entered. Only one involuntary service form is allowed per petition date. Select a service status. Select the type of petition that led to this investigation. Select the option that best describes whether a hearing was recommended and why. For situations that fit Scenario B, use any of the Yes options or No but Judge Orders Hearing. Select the option or options that best describe the reasons for the recommendation of a hearing or diversion. Because a hearing was recommended, data must be entered in this section of the involuntary service form. If a diversion was recommended, enter the date on which it would end, otherwise leave this field blank. This field refers to the legal decision made by the judge at the final hearing. For situations that fit Scenario B, select one of the first three options in this drop-down menu. Since no commitment took place, no additional data is required and the form is considered complete. Click the Submit button to return to the Client Summary screen. A new involuntary service event will be added to illustrate the next scenario. Scenario C. A hearing is recommended, a hearing is held, and a commitment is required. Fill in the fields as appropriate. Select the date the petition was completed and signed using the calendar icon or type the date. The date must appear in an 8-digit format. All other fields may appear completely empty until a date is selected. The date must also be different from any other involuntary service records previously entered. Only one involuntary service form is allowed per petition date. Select a service status. Select the type of petition that led to this investigation. Select the option that best describes whether a hearing was recommended and why. For situations that fit Scenario C, use any of the Yes options or No but Judge Orders Hearing. Select the option or options that best describe the reasons for the recommendation of a hearing or diversion. Because a hearing was recommended, data must be entered in this section of the involuntary service form. Because situations that fit Scenario C do not include diversions, leave this field blank. This field refers to the legal decision made by the judge at the final hearing. For situations that fit Scenario C, select one of the last four options in this drop-down menu. Select the option or options that best explain the reason for the commitment. Select the date of commitment ordered by the judge using the calendar icon or type the date. The date must appear in an 8-digit format. Enter the total days of commitment ordered by the judge. Select the option that best describes the setting or location to which the client was committed. The form is now complete. If at any point in entering involuntary service event data it becomes necessary to leave the form without completing it, click the Save Draft button. Draft records are saved but not submitted. They must be completed in order to be accepted by the MOTS database. Seven fields on the client profile screen must be filled in before the record can be saved as a draft. Agency, facility, last name at birth, date of birth, client ID, and gender, plus the date of petition on the involuntary service screen. Do not leave client records in draft status for any longer than absolutely necessary. The MOTS support team may contact MOTS users to offer assistance in getting client records submitted if draft records are left incomplete for an extended period of time. 
Client records left in draft for more than 90 days will be automatically deleted, and if they were valid records, will need to be re-entered. When done, click the Submit button and watch for any error messages. If errors are found, look at both tabs, correct any errors, and submit the record. If MOTS does not discover any errors, the Client Entry Portal will return to the Client Summary page. To review an existing involuntary service form, click any part of the line associated with the desired record. When reviewing an involuntary service form that has been submitted, all fields will appear in a read-only state, grayed out, and locked against editing. This is because involuntary service submissions are considered one-time events and do not require further updates. This concludes the training video for the involuntary service section. This is the last in the series of data entry training videos, all of which may be viewed at any time for training new staff or for reviewing data entry steps and processes.